Last talk is by Alison Hall from Mark Rose Lab again. All right, thank you all for sticking around. Um, so we've had uh, a couple nice primers on uh, cell fusion, and so I'm gonna elaborate on that. Um, so you can just see here, maybe. Um, this is an EM of two mating cells, so I'm gonna talk to you about cell fusion. Um, so we know the progression of cell fusion is well characterized. You know, there are two mating types, MAT A and MAT alpha, which secrete their respective pheromones. When cells of opposite mating types detect these pheromones, they polarize their growth towards each other, called schmooing, contact each other, and then degrade their cell wall within the zone of cell fusion. Um, and so the timing and location of the cell wall degradation is really important. If the cell wall is degraded in an aberrant location, the cells can lice and die. So my question is, how is cell wall degradation controlled? How is it that in general, um, cells will upregulate processes to repair damage in uh, you know, a site that was not supposed to degrade, but within this zone of cell fusion, the cell wall needs to degrade to allow for plasma membrane fusion and the formation of a diploid zygote. So work from the Pelman lab showed that a protein within the cell wall integrity pathway, a pathway known to respond to cell damage, quickly relocalizes from the bud tip to a site of cell wall damage. So just a little schematic, they laser ablate the cell wall and they see this protein quickly relocalize. And we can see that in this video here too. Um, this is protein kinase C1. It quickly relocalizes from the bud tip to this site of cell wall damage. So again, what is it that's special about the zone of cell fusion that allows for cell wall degradation to occur? Um, and so one hypothesis is that there are actually mechanosensors within the cell wall that detect when two cells come into contact with each other. We know that the cell walls flatten out and then allow for fusion. Um, and so what I showed you before was protein kinase C1, part of this cell wall integrity pathway. And the cell wall integrity pathway is headed up by five transmembrane proteins, WSC1, 2, and 3, MID2, and MTL1, which have been implicated to act as mechanosensors. And they are upstream of protein kinase C1, which has actually been shown to have a defect in cell fusion when it is overactivated. So Phillips and Herskowitz showed in 1997, and I've recapitulated here, that if we see, um, if we mate two wild type cells, what you can see is the formation of a nice diploid zygote with a single diploid nucleus. And if one mating partner starts out with cytoplasmic GFP, that marker can transfer indicating that the cell wall has degraded, the plasma membrane has fused, and we get tr mixing of the cytoplasmic contents. However, if you mate against this hyperactive PKC1 allele as PKC1 star, you can see in a proportion of the cases that you have two distinct nuclei and you lack transfer of this cytoplasmic marker indicating that the cell wall hasn't degraded and these two cells have not fused. Um, and this is obviously not a fully penetrant phenotype, but at least the hypothesis that PKC1 and the cell wall integrity pathway in general may be acting as a negative regulator of cell fusion, such that this negative regulation needs to be overcome for cell wall degradation to occur. And so when I first began this project, we wanted to look at these upstream signaling components and ask what role they may play. And so today I'm gonna to talk to you about two of them, WSC1 and MID2, um, because these two are the only ones that have shown uh, a defect in uh, mating. And actually, I've shown that these two are really the only two that are essential um, to have in this pathway. So I'm gonna start with uh, MID2. So this work has been shown before. MID2 stands for mating-induced death, and here you can see why. So these are cells exposed to pheromone, MAT-A cells exposed to pheromone out to five hours. And you can see that wild-type cells survive well. However, MID2 deletion cells show this distinct increase in cell death. And so it was known that MID2 cells died upon pheromone induction. And what we've shown is that this isn't just about death. This is actually loss of cell integrity. So we're using FM464 staining here, um, which you can see in wild type cells remains within the plasma membrane. However, MID2 deletion cells show this distinct, really bright staining of the entire shmoo. Um, and even in metabolically dead cells, FM464 remains within the plasma membrane. So this really shows that these cells have lost lost integrity. Um, and we can use um, live imaging to look at this as well. So what you're gonna see is a cell that schmoos, and I just want you to sort of focus on the schmoo tip, um, and these are the same cell, one with cytoplasmic GFP, 
And what you can see is that you get this blebbing out of the cytoplasmic contents and that happens at the same time as this loss of this cytoplasmic GFP. Um, and we know that this is occurring as these cells are schmooing. If you look at the top and the bottom cells here, you can see that um, you lose this cytoplasmic GFP as these cells start to schmoo um, and you can see this change indicating that they've died. And this one that hasn't quite polarized its growth as much um, isn't dying. So this is the phenotype of a mid-2 deletion cell. So I told you I was going to tell you about WSC1 as well. Um, and so WSC1 cells, MAT-A cells, are fine in response to pheromone and so we looked at them in terms of mating. And again, we're using FM464 staining here and you can see wild type by wild type mating, these zygotes look nicely formed, um, there no, there's no bright staining, no plasma membrane remaining between the two mating partners. However, if we look at a wild, uh, WSC1 by WSC1 mating, you can see that you get these really brightly stained zygotes in the same way that you saw those really brightly stained schmoos indicating that these zygotes have died. So um, we can quantify that death and what you can see is that um, if either mating partner has a copy of WSC1, they don't die, but when both mating partners lack WSC1, you get this distinct increase in zygote death. So the question that we had remaining from that FM464 staining was, are these two cells that have come into contact and independently died or have they fused and then died? So again, we turn to some live imaging um, and you can see here, so this zygote is not going to die, but what I want you to see is that one mating partner starts out with cytoplasmic GFP, the other with cytoplasmic uh, DS red, and you can see that uh, the marker transfers indicating that these two cells have fused. Um, and this zygote stays alive in this movie, but now if we focus on this one down here, again, you can see um, the two markers, and what you're gonna see is that the uh, uh, cell fuses, and then you get this change in the fluorescence, um, this punctate DS red and the kind of loss of cytoplasmic GFP in the same way that we see with those mid-2 cells. Um, and so we've confirmed with live dead staining and propidium iodide staining that these guys are in fact dying, um, and we can see that they're dying after fusion. So if we come back to this hypothesis that the cell wall integrity pathway is acting as a negative regulator of cell fusion, we hypothesize that what's actually going on is when you get rid of WSC1 or MID2, what you're doing is you're actually overactivating cell fusion now. You don't have this inhibitor, so you're getting this zygote and schmoo death. And so we wanted to ask, if this is the case, are these proteins regulating, negatively regulating fusion through many of the fusion proteins that we know act late in cell wall degradation? And the hypothesis here is that if we get rid of WSC1 in mid-2 and we get this overfusion, perhaps if we then in conjunction get rid of some of these fusion proteins, we may suppress this zygote or schmoo death. So what are some of these proteins that I'm talking about? So we know FUS1 acts with FUS2 and RBS161 and CDC42 late in cell fusion to help degrade the cell wall. Um, and this is, uh, they localize to the SHMU tip. This is uh, uh, GFP FUS2. Um, and if you want to hear more about FUS2 and CDC42, check out Gene Smith's poster. It's really great, very interesting. Um, and we know that if you get rid of any of these proteins, you see this characteristic unfused zygote phenotype, right? So again, FM464 staining, wild type zygote, no plasma membrane remaining between the two mating partners, and deletion of any of these guys causes this plasma membrane to remain between the two. So we first asked if we get rid of these fusion proteins, if we use a mating specific allele of CDC42 or RBS161 or delete FUS1 or FUS2, can we suppress the mid-2 um, pheromone-induced death. And what you can see is that out to five hours, we actually can suppress this death. Um, we don't see the level of death to the same as a mid-2 deletion on its own. Um, and this is specific to cell wall degradation proteins. If we delete CAR5, a protein that has a nuclear fusion defect, you can see that we don't suppress this death. So we wanted to ask the same question. So loss of these fusion proteins can suppress the overactive death of, WS, of mid-2, but can the loss of mid-2 suppress the fusion defect? And so here we're looking at a FUS1 by FUS1 or a FUS2 by FUS2 mating, and you can see that these cells do not fuse nearly as well as a uh, wild type mating. And if we delete mid-2 in this background, what we can see is that we can, in fact, partially suppress this fusion death. 
Um, and so we wanted to ask the same question with WSC1, right? Can the loss of these fusion proteins suppress the WSC1 zygotic death? And what you can see here is that we're only looking at FUS2 in this case, but um, it's, it holds true with FUS1, CDC42, and RVS161 that we don't, in fact, suppress the WSC1 zygotic death. And this suggests to us that WSC1 actually has a more zygote or diploid-specific role, which I don't have time to talk to you about today. But we again wanted to ask the same question, can loss of WSC1 suppress the fusion defect that we see? So again, loss of MID2 does suppress this defect, and in fact, loss of WSC1 suppresses it as well. And so the idea here is that um, we have these two uh, independent roles, potentially, where MID2 and WSC1 act to negatively regulate cell fusion, such that when we get rid of them, we see this shmoo or zygote death. And we know that FUS1, FUS2, CDC42, and RBS161 act to positively regulate cell fusion, such that when we get rid of them, we see this characteristic fusion defect. And so the idea is that when we get rid of both, we can counterbalance this activity and suppress this death. But in the case of WSC1, we don't actually suppress the zygote death because the phenotype of loss of the fusion proteins is earlier, and so we're not actually suppressing the zygote death that we see. And so really the ongoing question here is that we know that um, these fusion proteins act to positively regulate cell wall degradation, and if the cell wall integrity pathway is acting to negatively regulate this, is this a direct negative regulation where the cell wall integrity pathway is inhibiting these fusion proteins, or is it more about the cell wall integrity pathway acting to build up new cell wall where you have these fusion proteins that act to break it down? And this is still a very active area of my research. And so with that, I would like to thank especially my advisor, Mark, and all of you for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions. Hi. Um, so I have a question. I was wondering if this um, MID2 deletion, the cell death, is because of the cell wall degradation or because of the TORC2 pathway was death regulating. So we haven't really looked, we haven't looked at TOR2 at all, but um, you know, we're, we're working on looking at some EM2 to see if it's actually about cell wall degradation and this specific loss of integrity. Any additional questions? Or like yeah. thank, you. thank you very much. I would like to thank every of the present, all the presenters for a wonderful session. So thank you all for coming and enjoying it.